Hey guys, Dustin Dolby here. Welcome back to Workflow. Today we're going to approach photographing cutlery. A few of you have asked, and you know, spoons, knives, or forks, they're unique items. They're pretty angular, so you need to have a good understanding of the space around your product to how to control that light. We'll build up a couple quick, simple looks just using a pretty common approach. And we're using a black piece of acrylic as our shooting surface, and that'll just build us up some reflections right in camera, which is a good place to get us started. So keep in mind, it is a harsh speed light. Now, if we're shooting a reflective product on a reflective surface, if we aim a speed light directly at it, it's gonna have a really, really tough time rendering out that scene in any meaningful way. And I didn't hit that directly, but it's always gonna give you a bit of an uncomfortable look. Let's take that idea inside out and just do the opposite. So I'm gonna shoot my light off the ceiling of the room, which is white. So instead of directly lighting it, we're gonna sort of indirectly light it from something much more broad just to see the difference. Now I'm underexposed if I were to be shooting like this. But you can start to see the capability of waking up your scene through instead reflecting something bright into our scene indirectly. So to take that idea but boil it down to something a little more manageable, we just set up a 45 degree angle kind of system here using the cheapest nylon diffusers just kind of flopped over. Seriously, we test these things. Look how we have them clamped right now, doubled up. Now to verify your angle of diffusion is gonna work, even a cell phone light or a simple light, you can shine it through the diffuser and look through your viewfinder and that'll give you an idea of the coverage and verify that you have coverage. So anyways, I moved our one speed light here just behind our diffusers, aimed at it at about a 45. And again, I have a grid on our speed light, which is optional. That'll give us a bit more of a narrow result. But having this control is gonna be very nice because the ceiling was pretty sporadic. But here we're going to get a more refined result and it starts to look pretty classy right off the get-go. If I zoom in here and we do a comparison, you see it's much cleaner and the cleaner your acrylic is, you know, it can just compound that effect. And you can get very interesting renders, almost, you know, digital looking renders. So we just got to adjust this and look at the monitor, make a few tweaks. And usually that's not too cumbersome with speed lights if you have a nice stable setup. Kind of want to isolate our product on a bit of an island of light, something like that. Something to keep in mind compared to a shot like this where you're kind of limited in terms of crop, but sometimes the light coming from an interesting angle has very cool effects on your cutlery. So I recommend just playing around with it and trying to get a classy result. Let me actually just zoom that out to get us from a more obvious angle of what's going on here. Cause we're really creating this little island of light and then we're just framing it however we want and capturing it. It's a really unique approach. So let me get us back here. I actually like our original really simple composition, but one thing I don't like and to look out for is you can get a bit of a 2D effect if you don't pay attention to the side edge of your cutlery. Do you see that this looks a little flat, almost like plastic if your eye mistakes it without defining the side? Well, I just took our light out from the back in one of the diffusers and you can just replicate this idea on the side, either with the same light or a second light, whatever you prefer. And just try to catch the side of the metals. And it'll give you a pretty isolated result by itself. But you could set that up with a light like this to define it or just introduce it on light mode, which is something we cover all the time here. So make sure to subscribe and enable notifications if you haven't yet. We cover little tricks like this all the time. And this lighting setup is pretty versatile. You know, we can get away with adjustments and things still looking nice. There might be a small patch up here or there. One thing I like to look out for is color temperature. So we can go to extremes on either direction, but normally in terms of rectifying that, I also like to balance it in addition to a, a hue saturation effect because these should essentially be black and white if they are silverware on a black acrylic surface. There's no saturation going on here. So that's an easy way to kind of align that just so everything is you know, pure and simple. Okay right, guys, so I just got to set up with an alternative composition, nothing fancy, but something a little more artistic, just pushing the forks together. Sometimes you got to get a bit abstract with minimal subject matter. And I'm lighting this with the same diffuser at a 45 degree angle, but the angles are like wildly different. So let's see how the coverage is. And we can make a quick adjustment because if it falls short, like look at the top of those forks, they probably fall a little short in terms of brightness. It abruptly stops and I don't like that. Something as small as pulling the diffuser just more over my subject will make the difference. Like you might think you have to light in a dome or something or you know a lighting tent, but you don't need to. If your lighting setup is bendable, you can 
make those angles work. And when you set up something sort of flexible like this, it's really easy for a few adjustments to make the lighting work such that you're fulfilling the whole surface of the item. I think that looks shiny, classy. If I zoom in here enough, it starts to look like abstract architecture photography, which I just find kind of weird, kind of an interesting tidbit. Now the same problem exists with the front ridge. You might want to shoot a light into those from the front, but that would just be a simple light and solution like our solution before. All right, you guys, here we are in Photoshop. We have our side light and we have our base image. They're both nice images and they could have been lit simultaneously, but we can use light mode to introduce that. But I'm going to do that locally in just a moment. So I'll keep that in our back pocket and let's just clean up our base image because whenever I am working on product photography, I like to clean up my base image primarily just because it helps me take the image more seriously right away. So I'm just going to grab a few scuffs that are happening and we got low lights on some of the cutlery and I showed you how to avoid that a bit in camera but it can be inevitable let's see if we can get lucky sometimes you get lucky with a big crazy patch and that wasn't horrible there's still a little stuff going on here and you can kind of ruin the fidelity of the image if you over patch maybe I'll just leave that like that and you get the idea you can kind of make up for areas like that but sort of softer gradient low lights like that I don't mind that kind of gives character and shows off the material finish in a way now I want to introduce the side light, but just in one area. So I'll hold alt and click the layer mask button down here, which will omit this layer from showing up. But anywhere I paint with a white brush, it will show up. But I want this layer's blending mode to be on lighten. So I don't darken anything like I just did there. And no, I wouldn't be opposed to even just getting a small brush and literally painting in, holding shift, a white line just down the side of where you want that highlight to show up. And the alternative is just to put the whole layer on lighten mode, but this way I can choose where it goes, which is sometimes an easier decision if you want to contain some wild highlights. And this is a really subtle light. I could have went much more intense, especially if I was going on a pure black background. You know, I'd be required to go more intensely, but here it's sitting on a little pool of light. So there's a bit of leeway, and I like the little sparkle that that introduces with a quick second speed light. You can check for hue saturation just to make sure there's no hues in there unless you need them if you have a colored you know, cutlery, but I want everything to be uniform like I touched on in camera, so I'll keep that neutral. And that helps when you have different shots, keeping everything consistent. Now the outer two forks fell off a little darker than the other forks, so I actually selected them really quickly with the lasso tool. And I'll just grab that out of my path selection, but you can make that manually with the lasso tool or the magic wand could just grab colors on mass. And then I'm going to make a curves effect and by having a selection present, it'll create a mask by default around that selection, similar to how we created one manually for our side light. So with that selection present, I'm just going to bump up the brightness of the outer two forks a little bit because the light fell off a tiny bit and that's ridiculously subtle, but I think maybe I should have made my outer light maybe 15% more broad, and that just helps keep each fork consistent because they have the same material finish, so I don't want to be you know, getting dramatic with how bright they are here. I do love the aesthetic of low-key sets with reflective products. They really get a chance to shine. It looks nice. And if you have a dark perimeter, you almost have an infinite cropping capability if you think about it. Like if I have a black layer beneath this, if I needed a really specific packaging or ad size, I can almost crop that from this. And we're almost a really simple breath away from a catalog black look if we just approach this with a little bit more intention of keeping the sides bright enough to withstand you know, a darkening to that degree. So folks, thanks for watching this. Make sure to subscribe before you leave and hopefully this workflow gave you a peek of insight into how to approach photographing a reflective item like cutlery. I'm no expert, but using convenient angles to get smooth lighting is a no-brainer. And as a beautiful base light, I mean, you can complexify on top of that. And it's a great way to get started here. So make sure to post your own lighting setups in our Facebook group, which is always linked below. I appreciate watching your guys' work. And stay healthy, everybody. I'll see you next time here on Workflow.